Well, months of escalating attacks on American troops in the Middle East turned deadly this weekend when a drone attack in Jordan killed three U.S. service members and injured at least 34 more, marking the first killing of U.S. troops in the region since the October terrorist attacks on Israel. President Biden promised retaliation, but since October, his administration has dithered in the wake of the escalating attacks by Iran, uh, Iranian-backed proxies. Join me now to discuss how the U.S. should respond and how Congress is going to approach this. As Congressman Mike Waltz, he serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. He represents the 6th Congressional District of Florida, and he's a retired Army colonel. Cor Congressman Waltz, I was going to say colonel, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to see you. Yeah, hey, thank you. I'll respond to either and uh, look forward to praying with you this week. The, the country and the world certainly needs it. Well, I, I mean, when you look at the, the headlines on any given day, whether it's here in the United States or Middle East or Europe, I mean, we, we need to pray. Well, and, and first and foremost, for the families of the two Navy SEALs we lost last week and now for the, the three reservists uh, in Georgia, they received that knock on the door that that the family of every service member dreads. And what's so frustrating to me is I think it was completely uh, preventable. Uh, and we've seen now uh, time and again uh, that our adversaries uh, from the withdrawal to Afghanistan to Vladimir Putin, now to the Ayatollahs in Iran, uh, smell weakness in this White House. They see opportunity. And as I've said time again, you can put all the military capability you want into an area, ships, planes, tanks, but if our enemies don't respect and fear the commander in chief and his ability and will to use it to impose consequences, then we're going to have what we have right now, which is a world on fire. I mean, what we're hearing, Congressman, is well, we don't want to escalate. We don't. We don't want to get in, in the middle of a war. Right. It's. It, I'll be very candid. It reminds me of uh, some of the political debates we have here in Washington, where Republicans take off the table. Well, we don't want a government shutdown, so we're not. We're just take these things off the table. I mean, this is the same thing yeah. internationally. We're taking off the table that we're we're going to we're going to hit you hard and we're going to make it hurt. Yeah. So. You know, that that sounds reasonable, you know, say, well, we don't want to de-escalate. De we don't want this thing to spread. But look at the actual results. The exact opposite has happened. And that's because our adversaries hear something very different. They hear, oh, OK, uh, Biden and his team around him in the Pentagon won't punch back. And that's kind of like, to, you know, to, to simplify it, that's being on the schoolyard with the bully that keeps picking on you and you keep telling them, well, can I just give you a little more lunch yeah. money? Uh, can I just be nice and you'll be nice too? It doesn't That's not work how that it way. operates in the Middle East. They yeah. respect strength and they respect consequences. Uh, and just to go back to a few years ago, Iran was broke. ISIS was defeated under President Trump. Uh, and as a result, we had the Abraham Accords and, and right. peace uh, uh, breaking out. I, but I, I, now, I, now we are where we are. I want to emphasize that point because so many people, especially in the, in the Democratic Party, we see this every time they come into control at the State Department. And, and, and quite frankly, there's been a lot of Republican administrations the same way. The Middle East does not respect diplomacy. What they respect is strength and the willing to use the willingness to use that strength. Well, that's right, and and I'll just remind people because you have others saying, well, why do we even have troops there uh, in, in the first place to be targets for Iran? The troops are there to actually go after ISIS and to keep a lid on terrorism. And I don't know anybody who didn't celebrate the taking out of Baghdadi uh, or Osama bin Laden uh, or uh, Zawahiri or, or any of those other uh, terrorists terrible uh, individuals that will attack the United States if we let them. Uh, but Iran sees them now as a target of opportunity. They're getting away with it because they can. Uh, and uh, I, again, until you hit them in a way that counts to them, hitting back at some of their proxies or bombing a warehouse in the middle of the night to check the box to say you did something uh, isn't an effective response. That's not how you demonstrate strength to restore peace. Right. Uh, so we'll see what Biden does uh, in the coming days. I, I want to get your response to this. Uh, former U.N. weapons inspector David Albright is out saying, look, 
telling the, the Biden administration, yes, you should retaliate, but not not in a direct way. Go, go after their proxies. Don't go after them because you'll only motivate them to uh, rise to the level of having a nuclear weapon. I mean, come on. They're, they're pursuing that yeah. anyway. Look, Tehran, this is their whole model, will trade the lives of proxies and militias uh, that they frankly don't care a whole lot about. They're just useful tools. They'll trade those lives for the, the lives of Israelis and Americans all day long. That's a that's a good trade for Tehran. Uh, President Trump's team realized that and said, no, you've got to take out Iran's field general. But the same, quote unquote, foreign policy experts you know, told Trump the same thing. Certainly, he, you know, as as Fromm is saying, thankfully he didn't listen to him. You've got to hit Iran proper in a way that it matters. That I, I want to be clear, Tony. I'm not talking about sending in the Marines to Tehran. We're not talking about World right. War Three or, or or an invasion. There's cyber. There's its operatives running around the Middle East that you, you can take down. But most importantly, dry up the cash. Right. You've got to go after we're, the we're cash. Releasing and right it. now, Iran is selling billions of oil to China. Their foreign currency reserves are through the roof. We have to go back to a maximum pressure campaign uh, because otherwise they're just going to keep funding all of this terrorism. Uh, Congressman, I would see this as an opportunity. They, sh they have attacked us. They've attacked our military. They've killed Americans. I see the door opening here where we can hit them hard and we can hit them where it hurts, and that would be in their nuclear plan, their, their nuclear program. I mean, this would be the, the, the golden opportunity to take that out. Well, we can, uh, we can certainly disrupt it, delay it. Uh, I do think it would take a pretty massive attack to completely wipe it out. But I think to take your point, let's kill two birds with one stone because— at the end of the day, people say, well, why does it really matter if, you know, if Iran gets a nuke? Let me tell you what, uh, we should believe them when they say they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, and the rest of the Middle East will explode in a nuclear arms race, the Saudis, the Turks, the Emiratis, and others. Uh, and that is something that should raise the hair on the back of your neck uh, for, for, for every American. So, uh, look, we have to hit back in a way that demonstrates strength that imposes consequences and then restores uh, stability. And if we can take down part of their nuclear program as part of that, uh, that's something we should certainly look at. So why is it so hard to see the connection between having a weak approach, this, oh, we don't want to, es we don't want to escalate, we, we just want everybody to be, you know, live together in peace. Why can we not see, I mean, we can see it, but why do we have diplomats, why do we have an administration that does not see that that approach is only making the world less stable and America at greater risk? Well, this this kind of fallacy of appeasement is has, has been around a long time, but it is especially prevalent in this team that's around Biden, because it was the same team that was around Obama, uh, that yanked us out of Iraq with no plan. What do we get? We get an ISIS caliphate that explodes on the scene, that thinks we can buy uh, our way out of uh, Iran's nuclear program and gets us in uh, to the Iran deal, that thinks if we're nice enough to people like uh, Cuba and Venezuela uh, and others, that they'll be nice back. It is it's it's at its fundamentals uh, in in a pre an appeasement and conciliation approach that has never worked, does never work. But you have some real um, you have some real disciples of it, uh, and they are very prevalent in the team that's around Biden, which is really Obama 2.0. Congressman, I always want to uh, express my appreciation to you for your service to our country, uh, not only in the military, but uh, on Capitol Hill as well. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. All right. Thank you. And again, prayers for those uh, sad and, and new Gold Star families. Absolutely.